Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Here's to Your Health. I'm your host, Veggie Patty, and it is my pleasure to bring you the latest information on healthy living. Today's show is all about Qigong. Instead of me trying to explain to you what Qigong is, I'm going to let our two experts, Qigong teachers, explain about Qigong, talk about its history, how it's different from other styles like Tai Chi and even yoga, and then we're actually going to even do a demo towards the end of the show. So I'd like to introduce our two Qigong teachers. This is Cindy Orlandi, Hi. and she teaches at Yoga for Peace. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting us. Yes. And this is Erin Reese, and she is also a certified Qigong um, teacher and Tai Chi teacher, and you teach with Taurus Wellness, which is your own company. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Erin, for joining us. So why don't you guys just start by telling the viewers what is Qigong? I think some people have probably heard the term before and some people have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> so, what is Qigong? Okay. Well, I've been doing yoga since I was 15 and what I love about Qigong is that it incorporates the best of yoga, the posture, the breath, but it is also incorporates self-massage and uh, it's like meditation to movement. I was never one to like sit for an hour and just meditate when I found Qigong, I was just so excited that you could actually get that peace of mind and, and meditation to movement. And I know Erin uh, probably can add on. Well, the word Qigong uh, is comprised of the word Qi, which you can think of as energy, and the word Gong, uh, which also means practice. So you can think of it as energy practice. Okay, great. So if it's an energy practice, people are wondering, is it an exercise? Is it a form of meditation? Is it, is it yoga? Um, is it Reiki? Like, what, what exactly is, when you say energy practice, what does that mean for the person that's looking at doing this? Well, one thing that it has in common with yoga is that it is wonderful for stress relief. And, you know, most of the disease, you know, comes from the body holding tension inside of the body. And so, again, I have always done yoga. I've always heard that, um, you know, it's important to do uh, different types of exercise. I mean, aerobic, weight training, and stretching. Ever since I was 15 years old, I've been trying to do a little bit every day. But again, this, um, the stress release, and when I say meditation, it's that finding the, the calm, the peace of mind. And that really comes with yoga, but it also comes with Qigong. And again, it's just kind of cool that you can be moving, flexing the joints, and um, getting some of the benefits of like a more traditional exercise at the same time you're getting that mind-spirit um, okay. connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it activates uh, what Herbert Benson termed the relaxation response which is the opposite of the fight or flight so that's you get the stress relief and you also get things like reduced blood pressure increased um, immune function a whole host of things happen in the body due to that relaxation response because it activates your natural healing okay so it, it is a form of exercise but not traditional exercise that people are thinking about like going to the gym or yeah. cardio or something yeah it's not and what people think of as far as like aerobic Right. exercise and but it, it does have cardiovascular benefits even though it's you're not working up a right. sweat doing and at it. the same time it can help rebalance your energy or mm -hmm. your chi yeah. system so can you tell us a little bit about the history of qigong where did it originate from it is about a thousand years older than yoga and it's from china and that's one of the things that i love i love collecting information from different sources and so the fact that there are so many uh, things that are in common with yoga it's a chinese uh, ancient system of self-care and there's many many styles of qigong just like there's many styles of yoga but um, up until like the 1960s it was pretty much kept to royalty in china so that's why in this country it, everyone probably is somewhat familiar with yoga even if you don't practice people are less familiar with qigong but that's just because it has been you know coming into this country a little bit later okay and can you tell us, what's the difference between Tai Chi and Qigong? Because I think a lot of people have heard Tai Chi, but they haven't necessarily heard of Qigong. So mm -hmm. what, what is the difference? Can you tell us, Erin? Well, Tai Chi, is, you can think of as a martial style of Qigong. Qigong is the older practice that Tai Chi developed from, and people considered a, a type of Qigong. Um, the main difference in, if you're watching somebody doing Tai Chi versus Qigong. Tai Chi, you're always upright and moving. 
Qigong is usually standing, stationary. Some forms you're actually laying down and very, it's more of a meditation. You're not really moving your body, but Tai Chi, you're always upright and moving. Okay, so now, uh, Cindy, you had mentioned there's different styles of Qigong. So can you guys both explain maybe different styles and like what are things that you do that are similar and what are things that you do a little bit differently? Well, I would say that we're probably um, doing more in common. Um, you know, one of the resources that we both use is uh, Dr. Jenke, who is a, a doctor of oriental medicine. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but there are different, you know, teachers, and uh, we have studied with some of the same teachers, like Daisy Lee, and different um, teachers have come here to Michigan, where I have done, you know, some of my uh, training. Erin has been able to, um, you know, to go outside of the state uh, to study. But I would say that it's not so much that there is um, a difference in this, the styles that Aaron and I do is just that there are uh, going back to like the 14th century when they were um, different families in China would come up with their own style of Qigong. So one of the uh, one of the styles of Qigong that I've studied, and I don't think that you were able to go out to Ann Arbor to the workshop uh, with on the unconditional love style. No, I wasn't able to attend that. One one thing that was different about that, he has a whole style of Qigong um, that is seated. But most of Qigong, just like most of yoga, can be adapted. So, I mean, that's, I guess, the message that I would like everyone to have is that Qigong is really for everyone. Okay. Young, mm -hmm. old. Yeah. And, you know, it, even mm -hmm. if you're not able to stand, there's Qigong that can be done uh, seated and even mm -hmm. in a hospital bed. Yeah. So. Okay. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to... You know, emphasize that point mm -hmm. that you don't have to be physically fit to be able to do this and people who are bed bound if all they can do is move a little bit or even not even move at all just imagine the movements they can benefit from Qigong. Okay well I wanted to make sure I said the name of the book and the book is called The Healing Premise of Qi Creating Extraordinary Wellness Through Qigong and Tai Chi by Roger um, I don't know how to pronounce Yankee. this like Yankee um, Roger Yankee but it's spelled J-A-H-N-K-E. This is a book that you could look up if you're interested um, to find out more about the history of Qigong or a little bit about um, how Qigong works. And also, Erin has a blog, um, Reduce Your Stress Now is the name mm -hmm. of your blog. We're bringing that up on the screen for you. And you can you have a couple of articles, and I know you're adding more mm -hmm. to your blog. Yeah. So if you wanted to read up more about it, you can definitely go to her blog and find that information. So can you tell us, though, what are some of the health benefits that people would receive uh, by doing tight, uh, by doing qigong, sorry. Just by reducing, you know, stress and that fight or flight mechanism. I think one big one is, um, you know, you know, your respiration and your uh, digestive system. You know, you don't necessarily realize it during the day that we don't always breathe. You know, just naturally. I always like to say in my class that. When we're children, we know how to breathe naturally. When we get older, we kind of get uptight, you get tension. I mean, even something like being on a TV show like this, it kind of makes you a little nervous. The thing about the, uh, the posture and the breath from Qigong and doing it on a regular basis, and that is very important. I always like to say in my class, I want people to learn the exercises, and even if you do five minutes at home on your own, and that's the beautiful thing, um, you don't necessarily, you can do it on a mat, but you don't need a mat. Uh, the benefits are that you're going to be um, strengthening your respiration, your digestive system, all of your organs are going to be working better, and uh, your immune system, you know, as a result. So there's just so many things that it helps with. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have anything to add as far as the health benefits of the um, Qigong? Yeah, I'd like to add that in addition to the physical benefits, there's a lot of mental and emotional benefits. That's something I've been surprised by in my personal experience, how much this helped, not just with the stress, but, you know, feeling blue in the winter due to the lack of sunlight, just all, all the emotional level, it's helped me tremendously. Right, and now, if people were looking for additional information or if they don't live in our immediate area, um, what are some good websites where they could go to find a Qigong teachers? Is there an international or national website they can go to? There's the National Qigong Association Great. they could use as a reference and 
I got my training through the Institute of Integral Qigong and Tai Chi. They have a Find a Teacher page on their website. Okay, great. And then um, also there's the Michigan uh, Tai, tai Chi, Chi Association. Association. With natural, national speakers coming in. So if you don't you know, have the money to travel to, although I would love to have been able to go and go to to Hawaii to learn from Daisy Lee. When Daisy Lee comes to Michigan, I make a point of going and then mm -hmm. I share that information with my class at Yoga for Peace. Okay, and so it's the Michigan Tai Chi Association, which also does Qigong. So um, people can go there and look that up and see if there's any national speakers coming and see if they want to take any of their classes. So now speaking of teachers, uh, Aaron, you are certified, mm -hmm. um, and Cindy, you are a qualified Qigong teacher, but you're not certified. So what is the difference between a certified um, teacher and somebody who's not certified? Um, what's, the, what's the process, like what's the difference? Well, I'm registered, I'm a certified yoga instructor, mm -hmm. so uh, through Yoga for Peace and through the Yoga Alliance, I've had the training in yoga, teaching yoga and anatomy and uh, safe techniques, which is what I incorporate into uh, the Qigong as well. And then, again, um, studying with the different uh, Qigong instructors. But Erin, on the other hand, has been able to go um, to uh, Dr. Jenke's class and receive his certification. So we've both okay. been certified, but through you know different programs. Okay, so it's different methods. So if mm -hmm. somebody is looking for a Qigong um, class to take or a Qigong you know, teacher or even a Tai Chi teacher, what are some of the things that they should look for? I would just ask them what their experience is, you know, find out where they got their training and, you know, who they've studied with or, you know, what, what, what they've learned and where okay. they learned it. And for somebody who's not really familiar with it, they won't know, like, any of the names in the field. So, like, if, if um, like, what do you say is a, a good amount of time for somebody to go through a training to be qualified as a teacher? So I've encountered places where, you know, I've, I've called up and, and they've only taken a couple of classes and they decided they wanted to teach it. So what would you say is, is a good timeline if, if, you know, a newbie is just calling somewhere and saying, hey, I see that you teach uh, Qigong, how long have you been studying? What's a, just like a ballpark time frame that would be good? Well, Yoga for Peace, the teacher training is 200 hours. Okay. Now, of course, mm -hmm. that's yeah. not all Qigong. My advice to someone would be to go and, um, you know, check out the class. Most mm -hmm. teachers would let you observe. And I always tell people, you know, if it's something new, just go and uh, take a class and see how it makes you feel. I mean, that's really, you know, the, the key. Does it change how you feel? Okay, great. So I know that we're going to be moving into the demo shortly, but Cindy, you um, had wanted to show just one exercise while we're sitting. Um, so you want to go ahead and demonstrate what this exercise is? Okay. Well, just like in yoga, there is the child's pose, which is the rest pose, uh, the uh, discover chi pose. And there's a spot that's like three fingers below your navel. So if you want to just uh, join me there, we can do this together. And that is the lower dantian. So you're just going to have your palms facing each other here. And again, you can either alternately pretend you have like a little sponge that you're moving in. You can kind of close your eyes and come in tune uh, with your own energy. You can alternately pretend that you're rotating a little chi energy ball in one direction or the other. And I'd encourage people to try this at home. The, uh, the key, though, is that you need to have the alignment um, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. That's something that is important also with yoga. And uh, just focusing in on the breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose and the mouth. And it's something that you can continually uh, go to. Again, it's a, a rest pose. It's also something that I use in my class to let me know when people are ready to move on to another exercise. Okay, okay great. And I think with that, we are ready to move on to the demonstration. So we will be right back with you in just a few moments. Okay. Thank you for joining us in our Qigong practice. We're going to start with the basic posture. And again, you want to have your feet about hip distance apart. You always want to have your toes facing straight ahead. That is something uh, starting from a strong foundation in both Qigong and yoga is something that will help you with your practice and it will also prevent repetitive stress injuries. There should be a, a 
slight give in your knees and a little bend uh, where the hip crease is. Uh, think about your shoulders being back and down as if you're opening up your heart center. And go back to the discovered chi pose here. And again, that can be done seated as we did earlier, or standing, or even um, if it's someone who is hospitalized, this simple posture here can get you back into focus, building up the chi, the life force energy in the body. It is the rest pose just like child's pose is the rest pose in yoga. I uh, will also get started now with um, some simple warm-ups. And one of the things I love about Qigong is that it works on self-massage. Uh, there is a lung, uh, one acupressure point, it's right below the collarbone. And I'm slapping that. I'm going to turn around. Uh, the students will just uh, stay facing forward. But you can see that we're also slapping uh, the kidneys in back. This is a wonderful exercise to do in the morning when you wake up. Gives you a little bit of a adrenaline. You can try it in place of uh, your favorite caffeine beverage. And even if you have just like a, a minute um, at work, and that's one of the things I love with Qigong, is you don't necessarily need a mat. You can do it anywhere. And it's a little pick-me-up that you can do anywhere. Now, there are acupressure points on the top of the shoulders. If you work at a desk all day like I do, this is a wonderful thing you do that um, gets rid of neck and shoulder tension. And just finally, there's an acupressure point on the back of the neck that I'm going to show you here. And you can just slap here. This is a wonderful thing that you can do to uh, stimulate your immune system going into cold and flu season. It's a great thing to do. And now Erin is going to uh, show us uh, some as well. Okay, we're going <clears throat> to bend from side to side, and we're just going to keep our upper body relaxed and bend to one side and let our head flop. And a good rule of thumb is to go about 80% of your range of motion. We don't want to overstretch, so we return to the center and then go to the other side. And just keep your arms and your neck relaxed, and this is helpful for the spine. Um, if you think about it, we don't normally bend this way in our day-to-day -day lives. We usually don't bend to the side to pick something up, so this is it's good to bend this way. And another bend, which is good for the spine, is called forward and backward bending the spine. So we're going to bend forward like we're doing a, on the mat, doing a crunch, and then an exhale, and then we're going to relax and open up. So we're contracting our muscles as we're bending our spine forward, exhaling, relaxing, and inhaling. So it's sort of like we're wringing out a sponge and getting rid of all that stale yucky stuff we don't want anymore. And then relaxing and breathing in oxygen. We'll do one more. Then we're going to go into flowing motion. So we're going to raise our hands to about shoulder level and then lower them. We're inhaling as we're raising the arms and exhaling as we're lowering the arms. You can raise up on the balls of your feet as you raise your arms and lower back down.
thumbs indenting here. And with every inhale, always think about going up, inhaling up through the crown center, elongating the spine. Every exhale, think about sinking down into Mother Earth. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And just very gently, we're gonna do a neck rotation to the right, breathing into the neck motion, uh, into the neck. Any areas that are tight, just very, very slow, make it the slowest thing you do all day. And at the same time, with your thumbs, you're gently massaging that lung one acupressure point. And again, this is something that can be done standing during your Qigong practice, but it's also something that is very easy to take into your life wherever you are. When you go back to center, you just want to stop and then uh, do the rotation in the opposite direction. Slow and easy, focusing in on the breath. Another exercise that I love to teach for people that work at a desk all day is one where you're going to have your wrists together. This also helps the digestive system. We're just going to do a little figure eight motion. This works on the digestive system, but it's also working on all of the joints in the body. And again, like yoga, Qigong, it's med meditation to movement. It can take the place of medication to movement. you'll bring some of these into your day-to-day -day life. One uh, final exercise, you can just stand. This is a standing meditation. It's as if your palms and the soles of your feet are walking on the earth. And you can close your eyes and just think about visualizing energy moving up the back of the legs, up to the crown of the head, and then down the front of the body following the energy meridians in the body. Number one rule though in Qigong is just to listen to your body, follow the breath, calm the mind. Join me back in the Discover Chi pose. The Chi energy actually extends even farther, so you can play with the Chi, as Daisy Lee likes to say. So it's almost as if you have taffy or an accordion between the hands. You can try this at home. Start to lose the sensation between the palms. Just bring the hands back closer together. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Here's to Your Health, and I hope that you've learned a little bit something about Qigong. And I want to thank Aaron and Cindy for coming on the show and explaining Qigong to us and also for doing the great demonstration that you did. For additional healthy living tips and tricks, please visit my website at www.veggiepatty.com. I'll have information up for Qigong as well on the website. Remember, no matter the cards you were dealt or your current state of health, you have the power to take charge of your health. So never give up and never stop learning. The solution you seek may be just around the corner. I'd like to ask Cindy and Aaron to join me in a toast to our viewers. We wish you a wonderful today and an even better tomorrow. Here's to your health. <laughs>